imagine having everything. Imagine living that perfect lifestyle. You have that, you know, seven figure business, you know, on your dean and you're just living that amazing lifestyle, whatever perfect country it is for you. Now take a look at yourself in reality. You're a loser. Okay, maybe you're not actually a loser, but like most young Muslims, you probably have a ton of ambition. But at the same time, you're probably pretty lazy. It feels like where you want to be and where you are now is such a distant journey. Honestly, this combination of being ambitious and lazy is such a dangerous combination. Because if you think about it, like just imagine if you're just a random bum on the street. You don't really care. You don't have ambition. And if you don't have ambition, you don't have that bad feeling whenever you're falling short, whenever you're procrastinating. But because you actually want to do something with your life and you want to you know, make a massive impact like we all should do, you end up feeling really bad for yourself every single time you procrastinate, every single time you fall short of where you want to go. So it ends up being a constant cycle of depression, of feeling like you're just not good enough. And that's why you young Muslims who are ambitious, who really want to do something, you're in a dangerous position because you could really kind of mess up your entire life if you don't take advantage of that ambition, if you don't actually set out and do something and instead you just sit down on your couch and play video games all day. And yeah, this is one of the worst feelings. It's something everyone has felt, at least every ambitious Muslim has felt. You feel like, you know, you want to maybe even start a business, you want to do these amazing big things, these amazing big goals. But as soon as you fall short, you feel like you just lost so much. You feel like you're wasting your life away. There's a good chance you're feeling this right now. I mean, if you're procrastinating watching this video, you should probably click off and actually do the thing you're procrastinating on. But in this video, I'll tell you something super important about breaking the cycle of procrastination and taking advantage of your ambition. See, it sounds like I'm talking down on ambition, but honestly, it's still one of the most important things. In fact, it's actually necessary. If you want to be a person who does anything big in life, you have to have ambition, right? Look at billionaires, look at all the prophets as well, والسلام, they all had massive ambition. That's why the Prophet والسلام, when he was talking about making du'a, he told us to make very ambitious du'a, to make a lot of du'a. Because Allah is the one who can give us literally everything. You need to have ambition because think about it, Allah can give you anything. Why settle for a million dollars when Allah has the capability of giving you a billion dollars? That's what ambition is. So here's the thing, for a long time I was like this as well. I felt like I was just wasting my ambition. Honestly, for my whole life I felt like I wanted to chase really big things and really big goals, but I felt lazy, I felt like I was missing the mark. But there was one massive thing that changed it all for me, and honestly it kind of felt like an overnight shift. See, what you're missing is you don't have enough clarity in what you need to do. If you want to think about being lazy, like what really is procrastination? Well, a way you could think about it is just inefficiency, right? It's inefficiency with your time. So what is clarity? It's having efficiency with your time, knowing exactly what you need to do. And this means the more clear you are, the less you're going to procrastinate because clarity equals efficiency. And efficiency is the opposite of procrastination. So I'm going to get into how you actually utilize clarity, how you make your whole life and work more clear. But once I actually made this change, it felt like my dreams and ambitions were not like a dream or anything out of reach. But instead, it felt like a process. It felt like I know exactly where I'm going. So look, there's three parts to this. The first thing is getting clear on what you want. Basically, goal setting, getting clear on your goals. Now, honestly, this is something unfortunately very overlooked. Because what happens to a lot of people is they just see on social media the goals and they try and follow them. For example, they see videos of making $10,000 per month or of, you know, whatever business. And that becomes their goal just because they saw it on social media. But that's not what they authentically want. See, you have to understand like what you actually want in life. And honestly, that's a hard question. Like a lot of people don't know it and a lot of people work their entire lives to actually figure it out. But what I want you to do is make sure that the goal you have is not just something you have because, you know, some guy on YouTube told you or it looked nice to have a nice house or a nice car, but rather it's something that you actually resonate with. For example, don't make your goal, you know, making money or make $10,000 a month just because, you know, you like that lifestyle or because, you know, you watch some Andrew Tate shorts. But maybe make it because you actually want to retire your parents or because you want to do something big and, you know, you need that startup capital or whatever. Basically, think bigger and think authentically. And another point about having goals is that all of these goals should be pleasing to Allah or aligned with Islam in a certain way. Meaning, don't make money just to make money and, you know, flex on people or whatever. Make money so you could give a sadaqah. Make money so you could please Allah and use it in a way that's going to get you to Jannah. 
Because at the end of the day, our biggest goal is to get to Jannah. And you want to make sure every single goal is somehow aligned to Allah. Because if it's aligned to Allah and it's pleasing Allah, it's going to have barakah in it, right? It's going to have blessings and it's going to be blessed by Allah, meaning it's actually going to be beneficial. And honestly, if Allah is blessing it, it's going to be a thousand times easier to execute and acquire that goal. The second part of this is getting clear on the exact actions that are going to lead you to that goal. And this is another part that a lot of people are missing. What you want to know is the exact actions that are going to get you to your goal. And I'm going to use an example of something like trying to be a mahafir. Of course, that's a big goal and there's many parts to it. But if you actually understand it in a step-by-step -step manner, you'll understand it's pretty simple actually. Because the only actions you have to do to become a hafiz are just two things. One, memorize. And two, revise. If you just do these two things over and over again, and do that maybe five years, then you're going to become a hafiz. It's that simple. But what happens with a lot of people is they have a bunch of confounding actions. Things that don't matter, but they want to do it for whatever reason. For example, they're trying to become a happy as their main goal, but they're trying to also learn Arabic and all of this other stuff. Now, I'm not saying learning Arabic is bad. Of course, it's something amazing to do. But if your goal is becoming a happy, then you have to know the exact actions that are going to lead you there. And doing those exact actions are what you should be spending most of your time doing. If your number one thing is trying to become a happy, 90% of your time should just be spent revising and memorizing. And all of this other stuff, you know, you should really just not waste your time with it. Now, the third thing brings all of these things together. Now that you know exactly what you want and, you know, you make sure it's authentic and you know exactly what you have to do to get there. The third thing is it's time to make a system for your productivity. What I mean is make a plan of how you're going to get to that goal and how you're going to execute on it. And not just on a month to month or a year to year basis but literally on a day-to-day -day and hour-to-hour -hour basis. The idea with this is to systemize your productivity. Systemize the things you have to do to get to your goal. And honestly, there are so many different tools you could use to do this, so I'm just going to speak on a few. The first thing is, in my opinion, the best thing you could do, which is use a daily schedule. Literally mark down every single time you have in your day, every single hour, and dedicate a task to that hour. Schedule in, you know, your prayer times, the times you eat. But in the times you're not doing anything and you sort of have free time, then schedule in work to do that relates to your goals. For example, schedule in times where you're going to memorize. Or schedule in times where maybe you're going to work on your business. When you make this your daily schedule, now suddenly your entire day is systemized. Now your entire week is actually systemized and you know exactly what you have to do hour to hour. Now there's no more confusion and now you're going to be clear on what you have to do. And because you have clarity, you have efficiency. Now when, for example, the clock strikes 3 p.m., you're not going to be sitting there wondering what to do because you have, you know, an hour of free time, but you don't know what to work on. But instead, you have the daily schedule so you know exactly what you need to work on at 3 p.m. This is the power of clarity. And if you implement this in your life, you'll realize that your day goes by so much smoother. And by the end of it, you'll see and look back and realize you did so much more than when you were just wandering around blindly. A couple other tools you could use are things like calendars. For example, months to months to mark down the specific days that you're going to get certain projects done. One of the ways you could do this is let's say you have a goal and you have a deadline for that goal. Let's say it's exactly next year from now. What you want to do is utilize a calendar and for each of those 12 months, write down exactly what you need to do. Write down the projects you need to do, the tasks you need to do for each month. That way you literally created an entire system that's going to get you from where you are now to your goal. So now, for example, in January, you know that you have to record five videos and get, you know, whatever project out. That's the example of being a YouTuber. And let's say your goal is a certain subscriber count. But honestly, you could extrapolate this to any single goal you have. Now, when you have this productivity system, you know exactly how your year is going to go. You know exactly the actions you need to do. And you know exactly what you need to do on a year to year basis, on a month to month basis and on a daily basis because of your daily schedule. This level of clarity on exactly what you need to do and exactly what you need to execute on is incredibly beneficial and honestly it's something that's going to change your life forever because it's one of the things that destroys procrastination. And I know a lot of you guys are not going to take this advice but look if you're that one viewer if you're that one viewer that executes and actually wants to change their life bro make a daily schedule and schedule out your entire month and entire year to get to your goal and I guarantee you your life is going to be so much easier. Now honestly making this productivity system is just one piece of the puzzle. If you want to understand this at depth and you want to understand every single thing you could do to change your ambition into reality 
then check out the top link in the description because that's going to tell you everything you need to know about productivity. And I'll leave you with this hadith which is something we all need to recognize which is that the Prophet ﷺ said there are two blessings that so many of us misuse which is health and free time which is the one we were talking about. That's all I have for this video. Check out Cleed Islamic Streetwear. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.